Welcome back to the Living Fit After 50 show. It's Welcome back. Friday, one o'clock. What more could you possibly be doing that's more important than watching this show? Nothing I can I think, think nothing, of. Nothing, really. Especially this show. Oh, yeah. Because this one's a big it's one. All about so me. it's all about you. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't they all? No, no, they're not. Let me tell you, being married to her, it is always about oh, her. Oh, it's all about that little white dog you got. That little white dog. Where is Molly? She's over here yeah, sacked Molly. out. So, well, welcome, everybody. Um, we do have an important show today. I know we say that a lot, but uh, we're going to be, I can't say it's a fun topic, <laughs> but we're going to be talking about cancer because as we're filming this, it is October. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It sure is. Uh, and it's very near and dear to Lori's heart. Yep. Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit about that and uh, really talking about a program that you kind of developed called Stronger Than Cancer, where we talk about how you work with cancer patients, yep. both during and post-treatment and all that. So lots of good stuff. Let's just quickly get, get rid of the, the housekeeping stuff. Get the what? Get rid of the housekeeping. Get rid of the housekeeping stuff. Yeah. Where all the um, exits are. Don't forget you can call into the show if you have any questions. 910-444-0281. See, I even put it on a piece of paper so I can remember it. I'm cheating. Um, if you're listening to us on the Big Talker app, thank you. If you're not listening to us on the Big Talker app, as I said the other day, why aren't you? Go download it. It's available on Google Play and Apple. It's absolutely free. You can sync it to your car. Um, I was driving down because I do all things Brunswick on Tuesday evenings. I was driving down, <laughs> listening to our show from last week, as I did, blasting through the car stereo. Really? Yeah. Wow. It was a damn good show. Go watch it if you haven't. What anyway. was it about? <laughs> That was when Pam was on. Oh, right. How to so, run. Yeah. How to run.com. There you go. And then uh, again, feel free to call in with any questions you have or comments. 910-444-0281. And also uh, you can, if you're watching us on Facebook, you can comment in the chat. Our producer TK is watching that. And uh, on that note, let's, let's get into it. So October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, it is. but really we want to raise awareness every month. Every month to every cancer. Um, and I just think that breast cancer has its own designated month because of the number of people, men and women, that are affected by breast cancer. More so women than men, but right. but, but men do get breast cancer yes. and you should be checking, gentlemen. Yeah. Um, that's why I have her. Um <laughs> whatever but to your point that you just made i did uh just before we came on air i just jumped in and got the newest latest statistics uh, there's about 1.7 million diagnosed new cases of cancer each year and about 600,000 and rounded that off unfortunately pass away from cancer each year yeah it's crazy it, it is and it's something <laughs> that it's near and dear to Lori's heart but it's also near and dear to me because most of my family, unfortunately, that's the cause of death. Right. Um, we don't die from heart attacks or any of that stuff. Um, most of my family, sadly, various different types of cancer. So it's it's always on the top of my mind as well. Um, but breast cancer is particularly near and dear to you. you why don't you explain again? why? <laughs> What's that? Particularly. I had to slow down. To I say know. That I was I, cracking like, up. So I was um, eight months pregnant when my mother got diagnosed with breast cancer mm, 28 years ago, probably. Yeah. Well, you don't know how old your daughter is. Well, no, she's 28. So, <laughs> so I know it was 28 years ago, but um, it was amazing how those four words like impacted my life. I have breast cancer and I remained calm when my mother was telling me. And um, I got out in the car and drove away a little bit and just stopped my car and, and broke down. Because when you hear those words, how are you going to, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> get through that? And how are you going to be supportive when that news just like shattered, shattered my life? And um, and that was your mother that came. That was diagnosed. my mother. Right. So 
she went through, she went to the doctors. She had already gone and had her biopsy and everything and went and had her mastectomy. And at that point, she was on the fence about getting both taken off at that time. And she decided she would just do one. Personally, if it was me, um, I, I, knowing what I know, if that was a diagnosis that came my way, I would get them both removed then. Um, Why? Because statistics show, I mean, my mother got it twice. She had it twice, two different types of breast cancers. And, and it, it's just why, why keep it, you know, why risk that? Um, and just to clarify real quick, we're not giving medical advice here. No, we're here. not. I, okay. I'm just talking this about, this is opinion. my, this is my story. Right. Um, why I got involved, why I, why I got involved in raising money for breast cancer research. And again, you only get involved in a cause when it affects you personally. And right. back in that time, um, was when I started getting more involved in it. Um, so my mother went through, (coughs) she had the mastectomy. She did not have to have any chemo or anything because they, through the surgery, they were able to get clean margins. There was nothing in any of her lip nodes or anywhere. So she didn't need treatment. And then probably about, I want to say six or seven years later, uh, she got diagnosed again. And and that was in 2001. And that's a common thing to have it come back. Not not all times. Not um, all the time, but right. it does but happen. There's frequently. that op- there's that possibility. Right. So it came back again in 2001. So it's so that was seven years because she got it in 2014, 2001. Um, when she went, huh? 2014 and 2001. That's 14 years. What? <laughs> You said seven years. Oh, no, wait. So wait. <laughs> you got your so 94. There you go. In 2001. Yeah. I knew so, something was there. <laughs> yeah. So then um, she did not have clean margins. She had uh, some cells someplace else. So at that point, she had to start chemo. Um, and during her, after her second treatment of chemo, she wanted to stop her treatment. And I said, you can't. And it was selfish on my part for saying, no, you can't stop. But I kept reminding her how strong she was. And she only, and I know I say that word only because I never had it, but she had five total treatments. So she was almost halfway done. She gets through that, you know, we move forward from that. So she did, she completed her chemo. She went back to work both times after her uh, cancers, and it was amazing to see how strong she was in dealing with that diagnosis. Um, two different type of breast cancers. So that that kind of made us feel good knowing that they got it all that first time. So that's that's my story of why I got involved um, in some fundraising I I took part in as well as you did in a lot of the Komen walks um, and runs. Those are the three day walks. Three day walks. I Uh, I was fortunate enough to do one. It was an amazing experience. Yes. You did have several though. Uh, We did five. Our team raised about over $50,000 towards cancer research. And we, we were just five women amongst thousands of people walking and raising money and awareness for breast cancer. And I'll never forget the very first breast cancer walk in Boston that we did. Um, after On the third day, there was this woman standing as we were walking towards the holding area for before the end of the closing ceremony. And there she stood with the sign, my heart beat because of your feet. And that just crushed me because here she is standing there with that sign and and I'm going to cry because it still resonates with me. But we saw her, 
I think six years later, and there she was standing there holding that same sign. And I went and hugged her and I said, I remember you from the very first walk that I did with you or did here. And, and it's so nice to see you here. And she said, thank you for remembering. Uh, it's a humbling, humbling experience to take part in events that raise money for awareness only because the people that are affected with cancer or breast cancer, they they can't begin to thank us enough right. because we care, because we care. And if you look at all the, the breast cancer walks that are around every community throughout the month of October, and you see the thousands of people walking, mm-hmm. that's a lot of money raised for research to hopefully eventually find that cure. But Nine times out of 10, you're walking amongst survivors as well. Yeah, there's and, almost always oh God, people, yeah. at, oh, yeah. survivors, people going through treatment yep. now. Yeah, um, men and women, yes, young and old. It, it, it does not have an age and it doesn't have a gender specific. It, could it affect happens anyone. to anyone. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, and, and along those lines, one of the things that I think <laughs> a lot of people aren't aware of is how prevalent it is. Uh, breast cancer is the second most common cancer for women to contract. Unfortunately, uh, skin cancer is first. Um, That's we lay in the sun. Yeah. Oh, well, you do. I do. <laughs> um, and it's so it roughly affects about one in every eight women in their lifetime. And as you mentioned, it doesn't just affect women. It affects men. It affects right. everyone. So. Yeah, the chances of a man getting it are much lower, but it's still a possibility. And, you know, she doesn't toot her own horn, but she's raised tens of thousands of dollars. Um, as a team. As and, a, well, it was as a team. Right. And it, I, like I said, yeah. I had the privilege of joining you that one time. The thing I remember most, there's two things I remember. Day one. So each day you do roughly 20 miles, give or take. Yep. Um, It's about 60 miles total over three days. But the first day as we were leaving, this was in Boston. I remember there was a woman dressed up in army gear, like full pack, everything, walking that 20 miles in the next two days. I remember seeing her off and on Um, that. That's if you've ever carried a ruck or that much there, you she was probably carrying somewhere around 60, 70 pounds on her body. Yeah. And and that's the thing where. And I remember the, I think we were in Philadelphia walking, uh, our second three-day walk. Um, There was a woman and she was in her fatigues the first day. The second day we were walking kind of behind her and she had been injured. She had a prosthetic leg and we were watching her walk. Um, and, And the, we're not walking flat surfaces. We're walking up and down hills. And yeah. and it, it was amazing to see her truck through. And on the third day, towards the end, she was sitting for a few minutes and she was massaging her um, her leg. And, uh, and I knew the pain that she was experiencing because when you walk a lot, uh, you develop know. blisters. And yes, I'm sure she had some blisters um, going on, but she didn't stop. And that was one of the things, like when we would do our trainings, we would walk in snow, rain, whatever. And you never know what you might encounter. Right. But the thing was, like I said to the team, the first day or something like first day, the weather was not ideal. They said, cancer doesn't stop because it's raining. And they all said to me, Oh, we hate you. We hate that you bring this to reality. But that's the reality. It, it's also it, who you it are, doesn't though. stop. Right. And, um, you know, it, it's it's a humbling experience. It's it's something that I know I hold near and dear to my heart. I know everybody that walked a three day with us. Um, and like you said, you remember my kids walked in them. Yeah. Um, and I remember the first year that we walked. Uh, Melissa was the youngest one. She was 16. You had to be 16 to walk. She was one of two girls, uh, 16 years old. And she encountered blisters on her feet that were, it just looked like she had 
chicken pox on her feet. That's how bad her feet were blistered. She didn't complain about anything. The next day she got, well, we, we went to medical, got the blisters popped and stuff, and she didn't complain about anything. And I think she didn't complain only because she saw what my mother went through. Um, so, and it was her idea to get. Well, she also had you right. as an example right. of, you know, because it's funny when you mentioned the hills and you, it's something popped in my brain is part of the course that we did in Boston included parts of the Boston Marathon course. Yes. And we went up Heartbreak Hill, which yeah. if you've ever seen it on TV or kudos to you if you've ever run it, but we were walking up in it and I think it was you that said, that's a tough hill. I it, mean, is. it is tough. They were actually, some people couldn't get up. They were busting them up, but we were walking up and I'm pretty sure it was you who said, as hard as this is, it's nothing like what people right. go through cancer yeah. deal with. And and that really, to me, that put it in perspective, right? right? Any of the, the suffering that we were going through, whether it was with our feet, trying to climb a hill, it, it's nothing compared to what someone who's had a diagnosis and is going through treatment right. goes through. So it does kind of change your perspective. And Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean who am I to complain? You know, if I got a few blisters on my feet compared to someone who's dealing with something like that, um, kind of want to morph the conversation a little bit now to talk about one of the things that we wanted to really get into is how exercise in particular can benefit you. Um, and again, it's both men and women, but more so we're going to talk about women. Uh, it's not to slight the guys, but the reality is we're focused on breast cancer right now. Um, and that they are far more likely to get it. But one of the things that um, I read in a study about a week or so, 10 days or so it came out, um, the, the research that's coming out that says exercise as a preventative for all types of cancer, but especially breast cancer, the numbers are staggering. Um, you know, the one study said it def almost definitively reduced your risk of cancer uh, by about 20% for those who are active. And they defined active as working out like three to four times a week for about 30 to 45 minutes. The standard that you hear from the government, right? The 150 minutes of exercise a week. That's what they were using as their, their guide. And yeah, you know, when you think about it, 20% is a significant number. Oh yeah. You know, and then there was another study that I was aware of that came out in 2019 uh, from the American Institute for Cancer Research. Um, so they're the, the organization for that. They study studies, all right? Uh, and there, again, that study and others like it found a direct correlation in the amount of exercise that you do and the likelihood of getting cancer. In other words, the more active you are, the more you exercise, that risk factor goes down significantly. And that's really important to think about because so many people, you know, all they focus on with exercise, we've talked about this before, is losing weight. Right. Losing weight is immaterial compared to some of the other things. You know, we talked a couple of weeks ago about how I ended up in the hospital. The fact that I work out contributed to me getting out of there much faster. Someone that has, God forbid, a cancer diagnosis, um, the benefits of exercise before that to strengthen their body, to help them fight and during it, which we're going to go into when we come yeah. back from the break um, are significant. So actually that's a, probably a good time. Let's, let's head out to a quick break, quick break. And now we'll come back and we're going to talk about how exercise can help you before treatment. If God forbid you have to have it uh, during and post-treatment. So come back in just a few minutes, TK, take it away. And we're back from that short break. Back to Living Fit After 50. And today we're having a really good discussion uh, about un the unfortunate thing that a lot of us are going to have to deal with or have had to deal with, which is well, hopefully cancer. Hopefully not have to deal with it. I hope no one ever has to go through it. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Um, but unfortunately, it is a reality of life also. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you want to call in with any questions or comments, 910-444-0281. can also jump in the chat on Facebook. Uh, and also, don't forget, just real quick, 
get rid of this piece of paper, um, <laughs> that we have our website, livingfitafter50.com. There's prior shows available on that. There's other information. There's all sorts of good stuff. And then we have our private Facebook group, too. If you're not in that, you are more than welcome to join us. It's absolutely free. And in that, we post daily <laughs> tips and tricks. Uh, I had an amazing recipe go up this week for falafel balls. I am going to make them this week. Lori, I don't know if you saw the face. But I did not. She won't touch them, but they are delicious. Probably They're available in the group. Um, and there's workouts that you can go do. Lori puts a workout up every Saturday. Call them what are the weekend warrior workouts. Mm -hmm. Lots of good stuff in there, and it's absolutely free. Um, and as one person emailed me oh, about six or seven weeks ago, he's lost something like 40 pounds just doing what we all, what we post in there. So he really? like he does the recipes. He says, I try every recipe. Uh, his name was Mike something or other. Oh. Um, he's tried every recipe we've posted. He does the workouts and all that. So that actually made me feel good because we yeah. put a lot of time into that. Um, but anyway, let's get back to. A far more important thing, which is discussing about cancer, but specifically exercise in cancer. So uh, as I talked about before we went on break, there are study after study showing the benefits of exercise when it comes to dealing with cancer, <laughs> both pre prevention wise, as we kind of talked about, the more you exercise, the lower your risk. But really, we want to kind of get into now about why you'd want to keep fit and keep working out after a diagnosis, both during treatment and post. So let's ask the expert here. So for those that don't know, Lori is a certified cancer, cancer exercise specialist. specialist. Yeah. Exercise specialist. I, I, I never get it right. It's a lot, it's a mouthful. That's all right. What is it? What's the acronym like set Sefi or I don't know. Anyway, it's your material. Uh, so she, she has gotten extensive training uh, on this and works with, patients directly. Um, so what would you say, why is it important to keep fit and to keep working out when you've been diagnosed or going through treatment and af even afterward? So if you have been working out, you want to keep that going because like you said, you're, you're physically fit, you're strong. And even though you got this diagnosis, you still want to keep that going because if it's, and I don't want to say if it's just breast cancer, um, with any cancer diagnosis, most people then get, well, there's two things. You either become very depressed and let cancer take over your life, or you keep being active and just, Define take it. over your life and, right. and, you know, cancer doesn't define you. And that's one of the things that I always say, any type of diagnosis should not define the person that you are. And cancer is one of those diagnoses that you hear those words and it is debilitating and it is just crushing because why me? And, and it just unfortunate, you know, why my mother? Well, she had a strong family history of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but she didn't smoke, didn't drink, didn't do anything that would warrant or for you to say, well, you know, you didn't take care of yourself. Um, so you smoke like a chimney, drank like a fish and you're concerned that you got cancer. Um, but like some of the clients that we have had with cancer diagnosis, their thing that they say to me is, you know, what is your goal? And I just want to be strong. And when you overcome a diagnosis of cancer and you move forward from that, you're taking a great leap of strength to just keep going. Would you agree when you say they want to be strong, that it's not just physical, it's the mental and emotional? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's physical and mental. It's just like, yeah, I don't want to say it on the air, but it's that middle finger to cancer. Um, you're, you. <laughs> you're, you may have taken this, but you're not going to take that. Right. And um, when when you see somebody that is, has that diagnosis, you basically can see them melt right in front of you. And 
when they, if somebody has come to me and they've always worked out, they got this diagnosis, well, then we want you to keep doing that. We don't want you to just give up on life because your strength, your condition in your body is going to help you recover faster and allow you to keep doing the things that you're doing, as well as find other things that you can do, may not have been able to do, but now can do something different because it may have made you take a different path, but you're still working out and and keeping healthy. Right. You may not be able to do everything you could do while no. you're going through treatment, well, <laughs> but there's that's where you come in and work with them and make modifications. Right. You become differently um, able to do some of right. the things that you do. Um, and that's where when you get a cancer diagnosis, such as breast cancers, there's certain things that you can't do right away or if ever at all again. Right. So that's where when you when you hire somebody or go to somebody that has that experience or expertise or the knowledge or the resources to find um, you know, exercises or a program to help you, that's what you want to do because you don't want to cause any more harm to the area right. that's affected by any of your treatments. And, and that's something we've talked about this on the show before with all my experience. And I've been training people for four decades now, back to the eighties. Um, for all my experience, I, I don't have the expertise that Lori does, right? I haven't had that special training. Right. I have worked with people post cancer, full recovery, that type of stuff. Right. But somebody who's actively going through treatment, that's where Lori comes in because what Lori does, it's a little bit different and correct me on any of this if I'm wrong, is you become part of their, their team, right? They have their doctor. Correct. They usually have a nutritionist. Right. They so have what happens colleges, is, they have all these people. Yes. You become part of that team and you all work together. Right. If you're an existing client of ours and God forbid you get that diagnosis and you say, this is what's going on. I don't want to stop working out. Okay. Let me give you this. I can come to your oncologist. I can come to your doctor. I can speak with your surgeon. Involve me in all of that. And then collectively, as that team for you, we will then develop your plan of action for after you have your surgery or treatments or what have you. So that way, we're all on the same page. Um, and that's important because if you have you don't have that support and you may not even, they may not even come back to work out. However, they still know that you're well aware of everything and you're still that support person. Which is important because a lot of people go through a diagnosis like that. They don't feel like they have anyone that can right. be their, their aid, their, their, what's the term I'm looking for? Their cheerleader for that matter. Right. Right. That person that's going to be there. And this is where you're, Way better than most people at you. I have you, compassion. You have the yeah. <laughs> Way more than me, apparently. Um, just ask any of our members recently. But you are there not just to give them a workout to do or guide them through a workout. Much, much more than that. And that's that's where everything you're you're doing. Uh, advocate, thank you, TK. Our producer message. He can read my mind. He's that good. Um, I think. In my opinion, having watched you with people, I think they get more benefit out of that than they do the working out. Just having that person, because sometimes you don't feel comfortable talking to your spouse or a family member about it. Having that person that is going to stand by them, go to appointments. You've done that in the past with various things. Right. All and that one stuff. of the things, like I, I, and you say that you reminded me of something, because when my mother was going through it, she didn't talk to any of us about any of it. And I said to her, you know, I have some friends that have breast cancer. They go to a group. I don't need a group. Okay. I have, I, I can help you and stuff. And I finally said to my mother, I know you feel like you're going through this alone because it's affected your physical and mental being. But as a family, it affected us all. And I, and that was one thing that I think took my mother back by surprise when I said that, because 
the whole family dynamic changes when somebody gets diagnosed with cancer. And coming from an Italian family, we were at my mother's every Sunday for dinner. And that ended. It just ended. So. Which is a shock. To it you. is. It is. So but she then realized, wow, I, I'm not going through this alone. We went through it far differently than what she went through it. But we also didn't know how to help her. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't know what to do. You don't know what to say. You don't want to keep saying. So That's you the hardest today? thing for me is what do you say? Yeah. yeah. You don't want to keep while, saying, like, so uh, yeah. how are you feeling today? Yeah. How do you think I'm feeling? So, you know, you kind of, you, you kind of have to <coughs> learn and go through it with them and take the cues from them. Because like I said to my mother, I never had it. I'm just going through it with you. So we got to go through this together somehow. Um, and that's where, with my experience, I'm able to talk and connect with individuals with a cancer diagnosis because I was the other side of the diagnosis. But you you went through two bouts of it as a caregiver. So no, we went through it three times, three times. with her. Yeah. Um, so you you understand that, and you've taken that experience and roll it into your program. Right. I mean, that's it's obvious with that. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, if unfortunately someone is diagnosed, um, what do you what do you do with someone who maybe has never worked out or hasn't worked out in a long time? They're they're going through treatment. Maybe their doctor has said, look, it might because these studies are coming out one right after the other, you might want to look at doing some exercise. So I guess two questions I have. One, how do they find an expert like you? That would be the first question I would have. Google, no. <laughs> Dr. Google, right? Um, and then two, how, how do you begin to approach it with someone maybe who's never worked out or hasn't worked out in a while? So you can, in all seriousness, Google search cancel fitness exercise specialist out there. And I know our organization that we have uh, you can even put it on Facebook. Um, but w there are so many of us now. Um, Andrea's program is phenomenal and it is all around the world. And I, and I mean all around the world, it's not just in the United States anymore. And, um, you're a, you'd be amazed on the number of people that have that experience through it, within your area, connect with, um, local organizations they should be able to help you find um, somebody who has some experience in working with people with cancer. You've met with a couple of the ones. I have, here I have, and, so I, and I have to reach out to a few more just so I can connect with them and get um, my information out to them. But um, so here's what happens if you've never worked out before and you want to start working out. So of course there's a questionnaire. There's always that health questionnaire, uh, as well as the typical questions. Have you been cleared by your doctor? We need to see that documentation as well as really have an in-depth, um, assessment and conversation with the individual to truly understand every aspect of their diagnosis, their treatments, surgeries, everything. Because like I said, I mean, I have binders filled with the information of what I've learned from the course, as well as with each different type of, of cancer out there, we had uh, modules on them. So if I don't have I don't know right then I will know before we even start treatment because the resources that we have given to us and provided for us are amazing, but we're not just going to have you come in and do like a simple fit test and see what you're at because wouldn't be appropriate in that case. Right. So, <laughs> so it's not, you're going to come in today and work out. No, you're going to come in. We're going to talk. You're going to get to know me. I'm going to get to know you. You're going to fill out this form. Uh, 20 pages long. No, not that long, but, and then, <laughs> and the HIPAA release. Right. And then we start working out the plan, the approach and, and really monitor it. It's, it's truly a monitoring because if, 
you know, we're looking at for aches and pains, swelling, redness, fever, you know, a whole bunch of different things that we are watching in your training session. It's not right. More you know, so than like I would as a trainer, right. you have special right. things yeah, that yeah, you're looking yeah. for. We want to make sure that um, we're limiting the, the, the workout on one side um, until we build up some strength. We're not going to, we're going to work with your abilities. We're going to strengthen your limitations. Um, you're going to work by yourself unless you want to work with a group of people, but to start off, it's, it's that one on one session. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and ideally, you know, one of the things because of the cancer history with my mom and stuff and becoming a trainer, this was something I wanted to do years ago is to have that type of training. So that way, um, people with the diagnosis aren't just saying, well, can't work out anymore. Well, you can work out. You're, you can, right. there's no reason to stop. And all the studies are now saying you should be working right. out just, uh, cause she will not pat herself on the back. So I'm going to do I it can. for her. Um, the training she's talking about, you might think it's like a weekend course or you read a book and you go take a test. It's not, this is college level beyond college level in some ways training. Um, I think it was like 12 to 15 weeks of, uh, it was intense. Of you were virtual online training with Andrea right. going through the things. Um, you were doing classes online, classes you were studying online. separate. I mean, it was this was not some simple little 200 thing. 200 question test. I didn't pass the first one, yeah, and it was an open book test, too. And I'll tell you, I, I looked at some of the questions with all my experience, I had no idea. You know, it's and that's right, why I, it's it's not it's specific to it's not fitness. It's not what muscle are you using when yes, you do a exactly. bicep curl. That's my it's point. what muscle are you looking at to alleviate? I mean, it was not an easy thing. And I, and I'm going to say that, and I'm sure I'm upsetting some trainers who might be listening to this by saying this next sentence, which is you do not want just a normal personal trainer. If you have a cancer diagnosis uh, and you're dealing with, if you're currently being treated, you need an expert like Lori. And right. I'm, or, I'm not saying that to try and sell anything right. or anything along those lines, but the reality is, is the average trainer and the above average like me, <laughs> uh, we don't have that expertise. You know, I know enough that if someone like post cancer treatment, if they've been cleared and all that, I can pick that right. up. If they've been, yeah, cancer free, had for, a surgery, you know, 12 yeah. years ago, have been working out. Yes. But if somebody newly diagnosed, um, and even, even a fitness trainer could say, well, I, c I can try to train you, but I'm going to have to get some, some more knowledge on. Right. But unfortunately, that takes a while to get it the does. proper knowledge, yeah. you know, and, and we're not knocking trainers. All right. No. We're not knocking me in any way, shape or form. I just much like I, I have a specialty in cardiac rehab. I, when people come out of cardiac episodes, they go through all their PT and all that, then they would come to me. It's a specialty. So you, when you dealing with something like cancer, cardiac, whatever, you want to look for a specialist, it, much like a doctor. Right. Right. Uh, the general practitioner is not the one you go to for your cancer treatments. They're part of the team. Absolutely. Right. Right. But that's you go to a cancer doctor, whatever you right. form it is. So, um, yeah. Why don't we take a break right now and then we come back? I want to talk a bit about more about the type of training you would do with okay. someone to kind of give a feel. If God forbid somebody's going through it. How would you approach a session? What might you do? That type of thing. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. We are going to go out for a quick break and we'll be back and pick it up from there. And we're back to Living Fit After 50. Just listening to that last spot before we came back with Carolina Pure. Can't rave about them enough. I know, they're great. I've been, uh, so I had a little trouble sleeping the last few days and I started using the CBD. I did the oh, chocolate wait and the a gummies. You're on like their fifth bar, so <laughs> don't say Let the me last tell you, two nights. I have not slept that good in I don't know how long. So kudos to them. They have amazing products. 
Uh, check them out, Carolina Pure. All right, let's get back to the topic at hand, which is dealing with cancer and specifically exercise and how it can become part of your treatment. And I thought it would be fun, fun. to use fun. Yeah, I know. Uh, to use myself as an example. So if you've been listening to the show for any time, you know that it was about three and a half weeks ago. I ended up in the hospital through my own stupidity. We already did a whole show on that. Go check yeah, it that's out. Yeah, TikTok. Um, but one of the things that they were talking to me extensively about with the issues I was having was the possibility of colon cancer. Um, and you were kind of talking about how it hits you. Now, mind you, I do not have it was never even closely diagnosed, but they kept asking me and it was in my mind like, oh crap, I might have cancer. And so I can kind of sort of relate to that feeling, uh, but certainly I was not diagnosed. But let's use that. Let's say I had been. Okay. All right. So I'm going into treatment, whatever that treatment might be, and it's going to vary from person to person. There's no set treatment on anything. And again, let me clarify, we are not, as we're talking today, giving anyone any medical advice. You need to speak with your doctors. Um, we're just sharing our experiences and we are talking about the exercise portion because that is Lori's area of expertise. But don't take that as anything your doctor says outrules us by a million fold. So right. I just want to be clear on that. So using myself as an example, let's say, God forbid, I had been diagnosed. Uh, now I've come to you, all right? I'm going to be starting treatment I've been diagnosed with colon cancer. We'll just leave it generic at that. How would you approach, like you kind of alluded, the first thing you would do is meet with me. We wouldn't even be working out at first, correct? Right. What would you, you've talked about, you would talk with the doctors and all that. What are some of the questions that you might ask initially in that meeting? Well, so I took, I took out my manual. Show them the manual. Just... This is just one of well, so I several binders. I have everything tabbed. <laughs> but uh, so there are, let me just count them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten possible surgical things that could happen with colon cancer. 10 different types of I surgery. I had no idea. I know, right? Ten. And each one has a different rest time before you can start working out. Some is two weeks, some is four weeks, some is six, some is eight, some is, um, you know. And that's why we say every situation is unique. There's correct. no hard and fast correct. rules on any of this. Yeah, you know, it, it, some people spend days in the hospital after this. But mm -hmm. anyway, so a um, couple of things I'd ask you what type of surgery you had. Uh, and then I would make notes on everything. I would, I, the first couple of things I'd make, uh, first couple of times we'd be talking, making notes, uh, because sometimes you may for, you may have forgotten something. You're going to take your questionnaire home, you're going to bring it back, and then we're going to review it um, page by page, line by line, because one of the things they don't want to do is cause any discomfort or pain or, you know, any other problems related to whatever you had done. Well, and the other thing you do is with that, I'm assuming is you're going to find out if there's any devices that they have on their like ports, for example. Right. If you're still going through treatments, you may still have your central line in. Uh, if you had a total, um, if you had a colostomy bag, I mean, there's a lot of different things. And if we look at what what we then would look at during you know the the sessions are as well as some of the um side effects you know you've got the lymphedema infection diarrhea constipation um feeling like crap all the time yeah, yeah. <laughs> pun intended yeah. but as as well as there are limitations when you look at the surgical site you know is it on your abdomen is it um lower uh, you know, you look at the big thing with any type of surgery that you have is, and I mean, any surgery is muscle imbalance. That is pretty much a side effect or something that any trainer would always look at is your imbalance because, uh, a, you're a lot weaker and B you have major surgery. C you're off kilter. So you, 
that is one thing that any trainer is going to look at is focusing and working on your balance. Um, and balance does get affected when you're under those treatments. Oh, absolutely. Significantly. I, I mean, even after, even if uh, mm -hmm. any surgery you have, you your balance is always uh, something that, and in almost every uh, cancer here that I have, I think I have like 25 different cancers, if not more. Um, balance is one of the things that comes up a lot. So we always want to make sure that you are working out safely and you may be working out, um, in like a squat rack because there was bars on each that, side that around, for that right. support. So, yeah. I've done that with uh, cardiac rehab people. Yeah. I have them in a squat rack. Again, they're not squatting in the rack there, but it's there in case they need it for the balance or right. in the rails and all that. So again, I'm using myself as an example. Um, we, we have our meeting. We kind of sort of come up with a plan that first meeting or two, yep. and then you, we start doing the plan. Now, obviously, um, I'm putting her on the spot here, so get, cut her a little slack. But if, if it were me, right, you know that I'd I normally squat, else. deadlift, and all that. Would you have, what would you say? I'd send you to someone else. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I am speechless right now. Um, you, you know I normally do the squats. The you deadlifts wouldn't be and all doing that. that. I wouldn't be doing you that. What doing might that. you have, again, very loose on this because – we're not, we're not trying to be specific because everybody's different, but in my case, you know, a little bit about me. If I had been diagnosed, came to you, you know what I've done for working out. What would you have me? You're starting out? out with low weights and doing or possibly no weights, simple things. Absolutely. Because we have to find out where your car, where your aerobic capacity is at. Um, your upper Good body point. may still be strong, but you had a lot of stuff going on inside. And one of the things is, when you lift heavy, the amount of force that you put on your body, and you know, when you lift something heavy, you're bearing down. And, Especially if you're doing it right. You're, right. And that's one maneuver. thing that yeah. we don't want. We don't want you bearing down because you've already had some stuff going on down there. So very light. And, you know, your heavy lifting period may not start until six months out. Um, and that's based on, you know, a step up program, right. as well as then talking with your doctor and saying, all right, here's where he's at. Um, and knowing who you are, Dan, I'd have to go to the doctors with you <laughs> because you don't tell the truth. So I have um, never lied to you. I may have forgotten to tell you yeah. certain things, but or I've never lied I'm to you. going to be in trouble. So. <laughs> So that's one of the things that it would be, be it would be a step up program. I don't right. care what you did pre-surgery. What I care about is what we're doing post-surgery. It's great to know where you were. This is where we are. Right. And that's going to be a goal of yours. We'll get there. We may get close to it. We may not get to that specific weight. Um, but we'll we'll work with you to get you to a point where you're comfortable and you're satisfied with the progress that you're making. Yeah, I mean, the key point that I think Lori's trying to make, and, and I am too, is that uh, for someone like myself who works out regularly, you know, with the diagnosis I have, which is not cancer, I'm, I can't lift technically until January, you know. Technically nothing. You cannot lift until <laughs> January. See, this is what, and, this is why as a, really any type of trainer, when you have somebody like, you know, who here, you have to go to the doctors with them. Um, and that's why that's we check temperatures before point. working out. We, we really monitor for swelling. We do a lot of different things during that workout training. Right. And if we have to have you sign a release because it's you, I would sign a release, but um, you really have to, you have to remind your client to listen to their bodies and, and listen to us as the professional and not right. say, well, back in the day, yep, back in the day, yeah. but now you're today and you can't do that anymore. Yeah. What you could do may not be possible anymore Correct. or to the level that you're used to. Correct. All right. On that note, we've got to take one final break, 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 really? break. <laughs> and then we're going to come back and close out the show. I cannot believe how fast this has gone by.
we're back to Living Fit After 50. We only got about a minute or so to wrap things up. Uh, Lori, if someone wanted to take advantage of your outstanding expertise, outstanding, how would they reach out to you? What's our phone number? No. Uh, I hope you know. Uh, you can reach out to me at Lori at FullCircleFitnessNC.com or info at LivingFitAfter50.com. So many different ways. Uh, you Thanks. can check out us on our website. Full circle Full fitness circle NC fitness dot com. NC. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So. Or living fit after 50.com. <laughs> and you can also call in at 910-399-8350. All right. Next week, we're going to have Dr. Rachel Gregg on with us. She's a doctor and pharmacist. She's going to be talking about her holistic approach to medicine. It's going to be amazing. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Everyone, you have an awesome week. And I hope um, you never have to deal with what we talked about today. No, absolutely. But if you do, give me a call. Until next time, we're signing off. You have a great week, everybody.